Welcome to Raymer Praise. You know, this weekend, honey, is the 4th of July yes. weekend. Very Celebration. Weekend. Many people are, are celebrating and uh, with family, picnics, all kinds of celebrations. Yeah, but this is a celebration of our freedom. That's right. You know, and of course, I served in the United States Army, and most all, most every service guy that serves yes. today, well, we understand. It better than maybe the That's most right. people do. The price that the, was paid. The price that was freedom. paid for freedom. I mean, I thank God I never went under the went under fire. But well, I was fired over my, or where we were staying a couple of times. But uh, in what I was doing, but. Uh, Freedom. That's cost. right. That's right. It, it does cost. cost. And that's what I'm talking about is freedom. And they're both freedom naturally and spiritually. And there's a lot of people that are free and naturally, but they're not free spiritually. That's right. Real freedom is when you there's both. Yes. There's both. Now, at the end of at the end of this uh, message, we are going to partake of communion. So our, we got elements right here. So go, go and get, somebody said, well, I don't have it. Get some grape juice, uh, you know, whatever you've got. Crackers, bread. Cra crackers, bread, whatever. I remember when we used to, when I was a little kid, dad was the pastor of the church. We'd break up crackers, saltine That's crackers, right. and use them as, as our bread. Now we got these little wafers, unleavened wafers. And at the end, we're going to take, we're going to, uh, going to take communion. But right now, let's go where I'm talking about freedom. First Corinthians 11, start reading with from verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. I want you to notice in remembrance of me. What are we remembering? We, in the communion, we're remembering the finished work of Calvary. Christ's redemptive work at Calvary. And that's what set us free. He obtained freedom spiritually for us at Calvary. And we can enjoy that freedom. John 19.30, he, that is Jesus, said, It is finished, and bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. When he said it's finished, it meant that he had done what was necessary to break the bond of Satan and that it was finished. Understanding the finished work of Calvary helps us to understand the freedom that we have today. Amen. Ephesians 1, 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. The blood of Jesus has already been spilled for freedom for humanity. We're talking about something that's already happened not going to happen, not might happen. We're talking about something that's already done. He spilled his blood on Calvary for salvation for all humanity. You know, when it comes to the blood of Jesus and the cross and thinking about the cross and remembering what happened on that hill, you know, there's a song that says, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. I heard some of you saying it down there. You know, without the shed blood, there's no salvation for anyone. There's no freedom for anybody. Without the blood, we, can't, we cannot escape the clutches of sin. Without the blood, we cannot escape the 
tyrannical grip of Satan. Without the blood, we would not be free. I know many of you, how many of you went, uh, you know, went to like a Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostal, an evangelical type church? All right. I know we sang these songs here. I don't know whether they sang them in the liturgical churches or not because I don't know whether they did or not. But uh, how many of you can remember? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in his grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? I mean... I just, I just said a couple of words and it just, it, it came to you automatically, right? How many of you, many of I started saying it, you, 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 you knew exactly what I was saying. You know, we, we, we sing these songs over and over again until they become such a part of us that all we got to hear is a word or two and we can, we can start singing. And of course, my favorite. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stain. Uh, and then the, then the one that we'd shout to, there's power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the lamb. There's power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of Jesus. And then we Pentecostal Jews are saying, there's power, 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 power. <laughs> Get four powers in there. Huh? How many remember the four powers? <laughs> and I see some of them shaking their hands. You know, why did we sing those songs? It was to remind ourselves that the blood of Jesus shed at Calvary had set us free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, as we get ready to partake of communion today, this cup is the testimony that the blood of Jesus has set us free. 1 Corinthians 10, 16, the first part of that verse says, is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? Today, as we partake of this cup, let us remember what it stands for. It stands for our spiritual freedom. It stands for the spiritual freedom of anybody that will accept it. Now, many people are teaching in this day that uh, all your sins have already been forgiven and so forth, and that's true. And we can't work for them. No, there's nothing we can do. But we must come and accept it. Remember the Philippian jailer when the jailhouse shook and Paul and Silas got loose? The jailer said, what can I do? And Paul said, repent. The day of Pentecost, when Peter had preached, they said, what must we do? And Peter said, repent. Hello. The blood of Jesus. So as we partake of this cup today, let us partake of the cup knowing that it is the blood of Jesus. This represents the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ on Calvary's hill for our salvation. You know, Christ finished the work of our healing. Not only did he finish the work of our salvation, but he finished the work of our healing so we could be free from sickness and disease. Matthew 27, 26 when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. That's Pilate. That means whipped, beaten. One of the translations says whipped uh, with the, 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 the cat of nine tails. And 1 Peter 2, 24 says, by his stripes, you might be healed. By his stripes, you were healed. Anybody remember English class? 
It's a long time ago, but I remember it. And they taught you that there's, there's past, present, and future, right? Where does were fit into that? Past. Then if we were, we are. If I was, then I is. Now, I realize that's not good English, but I get the point across, okay? The stripes was laid on, laid on Jesus' back for our healing. This is not some wishful thinking. This is not a, some far-fetched doctrine. It's what the Bible says. You know, it's time for us to rise up and live in the truth of God's Word. You know, there, in the day and age that we're living in, we, go, we have to be careful. We're going to have to come to the point that we're either going to live by God's Word and read the Word and rightly divide the Word and rightly understand the end time prophecy, or we're going to have to go with all the fang dangle stuff and all of the, I'll go with our favorite teacher and whatever he's doing. I'm going with the Bible. I'm going to stay at the Word. What the Word? Stay at the Word of God, no matter what. But, hey, the blood of Jesus, the body of Jesus was broken for our spiritual and physical healing. And we need to stay with the Word no matter what comes up and what, what, what happens, what doesn't happen, what this one says or that one says. Don't stay with your favorite teacher. Stay with the Bible. The one thing, and I, I can vouch for this, there's such uh, Rich over there, there's such Craig, and there's such many of you out there that have been close to Dad, Doug Jones, and a lot of people. And he, you'd ask him a question, and he'd say, what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say about some new doctrine or some new something that's coming down the pike? And all I say to you, what's the Bible say? Go read the Bible. Hello? You know, the Word of God promised us salvation, then let's receive it. Hello? You there? You going home? The Word of God promised us healing. Or said, didn't promise it. No. We say that, and that's a wrong, that's a misnomer. Actually, the Word of God promised us healing. I mean, the Word of God didn't promise us healing. The Word of God said we were healed. Hello? The Word of God said we can have deliverance. The Word of God says we can have abundant provision. It's all a part of the redemptive packet. It's all inclusive. Then let's receive it. Healing is a part of that. Of that. It's one of the benefits. Look what David said in Psalms 103. Uh, 103, 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgave all our iniquities, who healed all of our diseases. Healing is part of the finished work of Calvary. Hallelujah. In a minute, you're going to receive this little wafer I have in my hand. This is the testimony that our healing has already been provided. Hello? Now we go to the last part of that, 1 Corinthians 10, 16. And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Now remember the, the first part we read here just, just a moment ago, if we read the whole thing, is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ. And then, and is not the bread we break a participation in the body of Christ. As we drink the cup and break the bread and devour it, we are remembering. What are we remembering? Jesus' death on the cross of Calvary. Jesus taking the beating for our healing. That's what we're remembering. We are remembering 
that Jesus has redeemed us. Just as we, three days ago, remember, were remembering our fight for freedom so people could worship as they please, so people could live in a life of freedom. You see, if many people had their way today, we would not have the freedom to walk through those doors. We would not have the freedom to sit in this church and to lift our hands to the one and only God and give him praise and glory for Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, that laid down his life and Calvary so we could be free spiritually and live in line with the Word of God. You know, today we have the opportunity to walk in the freedom that Christ obtained for us at Calvary. Today we walk in the freedom that the revolutionary soldiers paid a price for. We walk in a freedom that the World War I vets paid a price for. We walk in a freedom that the World War II people paid a price for. We walk in freedom today because blood was shed for those stars and stripes. And we walk in freedom today because of this flag, the Christian flag, that has a representation on it of that cross. We don't need to live at the cross, but we've got to come by way of the cross. The cross is the doorway into all of the things that he purchased when he said, it is finished. It is finished. You know, it's time to remember what Jesus did today. It's time to receive what he did for us. Why would he tell us to remember? So we can get sentimental? So we can shed some tears? No. So we can receive what he did for us on Calvary and walk in it. Freedom from sin, freedom from sickness and disease, freedom from guilt and condemnation, freedom from the enemy's tyr tyrannical grip, freedom from lack and poverty. That's what this table is all about. As we partake of communion today, can you remember? When you accepted that freedom and became born again by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, asked for forgiveness for your sins, how many of you can remember where it was and when it was that you accepted Jesus? You know, I grew up a pastor's son. And I was in church, like I told you. I was born on a Sunday, I was in church the next Sunday. But you know what? That didn't save me. That didn't make me a Christian. Dad left the church there as pastor in the middle of my third grade year, 1949, and went out preaching, oh, traveling, that he did for the rest of his time. You know, it wasn't until the next year at church in Garland, Texas, 
that one day I went down, knelt, and prayed and asked God for salvation through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, so many times we need to realize God does not have any grandchildren. He just has all children. We have to come and say, Lord, forgive me. I accept Jesus as my, my Lord and Savior. You see, this is a time of remembrance. As we partake of communion, this is a time to exercise our faith and receive what this communion table represents. It represents salvation. It represents healing. But it represents all of the finished work of Calvary, which is provision, which is all of what's written in this word. This is a time to remember. God, you said it. Now I believe it and I receive it. Today, as we partake of communion, I want you to remember your walk with God. From the time you received Jesus as your Savior to the present hour, remember all that he's done for you. Remember what he has brought you through and brought you out of. And remember, if he did it once, he'll do it again. Hello? How many understand where I'm coming from this morning? I trust you enjoyed that message on freedom. But you know, in case some of you have natural freedom, but you don't have spiritual freedom, you never accepted Christ as your personal Savior, or you need to rededicate your life, just pray this quick prayer with me right now. Repeat it with Miss Lynette right now. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for your son, Jesus. I believe he's the son of God. I believe he's the son of God. I believe he died for our, my salvation. I believe he died for my salvation. You said that if I would... Confess with my mouth. You said that if I would confess with my mouth. That he was Lord. That he was Lord. And believe in my heart. And believe in my heart. That I would be saved. That I would be saved. I confess with my mouth. I confess with my mouth. And I believe mouth. in my heart. And I believe in my heart. And I thank you now. And I thank you now. That I'm a new person in Christ that Jesus. That I'm a new person in Christ Jesus. On the screen there is uh, uh, an address that you can, uh, internet address that you can write to us. And we'd, we'd like to hear from you that you prayed this prayer with us. Now, you know, we have spiritual freedom because of what Christ did on Calvary. Yes. So I want to read what the Apostle Paul said in, in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three through 26. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And he went given thanks, he break it and said, Take ye, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my, in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death till he comes. Now you see, this wafer represents his body that was broken and beaten for us. And by his stripes that he took up on his back, we receive healing. So as you partake of this, I trust each one of you has gotten something there that you can use for the bread. It doesn't matter what it is. And you can use, you can use a Coke if you have to or water if you want to. Just it's, This is a representation. This is not the blood of Jesus. This just represents that. And that was shed for, for the blood was shed for our spiritual 
regeneration or salvation. The body was broken and beaten for our physical healing. So if you need healing, just say, Lord, I take healing now. Let's, let's, let's hold the elements in our hand and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus. He died upon the cross for our salvation. He was beaten for our physical healing. We thank you for that today in Jesus' name. Amen. Take and eat. Shall we drink together? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, because of what you've done for us. Yes. Right there, you just give the Lord thanks. This is a time to give him thanks for what he's done. And because he lives, we can live also. That's right. Because he died on the cross, we have all the good things that we have today. I trust you enjoyed the, the program today. And you know, just for today... And, and, and I, this is something that wasn't planned. I just said, let's do this. I've got a, a, a book. It's called The Table That Speaks, Bringing Communion to Life. And it's messages on communion. And I'd like for you to have this book. It's 1095. Uh, you can go to the rhema.org slash store and get this book right here, uh, The Table That Speaks. Thank you for being with us today. And thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. This month from Kenneth Hagin Ministries, the Believer's Authority Curriculum. Reigning in life as a king. In this eye-opening four-CD series, Kenneth E. Hagin explains your position of right standing with God. And in this best-selling four-CD series, The Believer's Authority, you will find out what authority is, how to exercise that authority, and much more. The Believer's Authority Legacy Edition is a must-have book for every faith library with added messages, historical introduction, and photographs. The Believer's Authority Study Guide. This powerful study guide featuring 10 lessons with all new material can be used for individual or even group study. The book, the study guide, and eight powerful CDs can be yours today for only $59.95. Just call toll-free 888-PRAISE-8 or log on anytime, day or night, to rhema.org. Don't wait. Order the Believer's Authority Curriculum now. Thank you for watching Rhema Praise with Ken and Lynette Hagen. Ken, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information, please write, call, or visit our website. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope, help, and healing for a hurting world.